Veterans Breakfast Club has organized this wonderful parade and celebration for Julia Parsons on the occasion of her 100th birthday. <laughs> Julia was one of these rare code breakers in the Navy during World War II. She did really important top secret work decoding the German military code Enigma. It didn't lead to the end of the World War II directly, but it did save thousands and thousands of lives to be able to read the Nazis' secret communications. Everybody is making a big thing of this. <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed by it. <laughs> I don't know how I've lived so long. There are not very many World War II 100-year-old women, and we are losing World War II people. World War II is very special people. The war was the beginning of the fact that women realized they could do stuff just as well as men, and sometimes better. The war had broken out in the fall of 41 with Pearl Harbor, and I was due to graduate in the spring of 42 from Carnegie Tech. The whole graduating class was in the ROTC and they zoomed off. They were gone. Everybody we knew had gone. And we could sit here and roll up silver paper and knit booties or something. I knew I could do more. I had to find a job somewhere. And in the paper, I saw that the Navy had started to take in women. And I thought, that sounds interesting. So I applied and they said, if you were a college graduate, you could go directly to officer training school. I was sent to Northampton to Smith College for three months where they gave us a basic Navy type training. We had all kinds of subjects, and, but nothing to do with decoding. And we ended up in the communications annex northwest in washington the borough of forest hills congratulates julia parsons upon the occasion of her 100th birthday happy oh. birthday julia this is a present this is from the borough forest hills oh, oh yes 350,000 women served in uniform during world war ii and women played really important roles on the home front during the war they were doing jobs that normally men did. And it was a transformative experience for that generation of women. I mean, Julia will tell you, it was the most important work she ever did in her life. We all sat in a room waiting for the assignment that we were to be given. And a woman came in and said, does anyone speak German? And I said, and I took two years of it in high school and I ended up in the German U-boat decrypted section. This Enigma machine was so complicated. It was like a large typewriter, but it had the, the same keyboard that we have now on computers. And any letter that went in came out something else. And then it went into the second wheel and came out and went into the third wheel. So it was decoded four times. My name is Sam Lemley. I'm the curator of special collections at Carnegie Mellon University Libraries. We have two Enigma machines in the collection, one three-rotor model, which is the earlier one, and one four-rotor model. This is the four-rotor Enigma, and it's the one that Julia Parsons worked on during World War II. And it's the more complex of the two models because they added the fourth rotor. So they were invented actually by a man named Arthur Scarbius, who was a German inventor, businessman in the 1920s because their original purpose was actually to disguise business communications. The Nazi military very quickly realized the power that they would lend to their ciphering. And why it was considered almost unbreakable is because you had a combination of you know, encryptions. A plain text letter was encrypted multiple times. That's really the secret of its, its power, right? It's its effectiveness. The Germans had the machine and we did not but we finally did get it and got a copy of it. And then everybody used it, all the ships at sea and airplanes. They were so conceited, they thought nobody could break into their setup. I don't remember anything remarkable coming through other than rendezvous points for the submarines to attack a convoy or whatever. 
So the machine was used for everything, every kind of communication from something as mundane as the weather report at the beginning of every day to troop movements, tactics, things like that. But the four rotor model, which was more complex, was used by the Navy and specifically the Nazis U-boat fleet. They're fascinating devices, I mean, of unspeakable sort of electromechanical complexity. But I often point out that they're also fairly dark. You know, they have this dark history. Her project gathered mathematicians from around the world, code breakers from around the world, and she did that work at Washington, D.C., and she couldn't talk to anybody about it for 50 years after her service. And it's just so wonderful to celebrate her today. It's a kind of a delayed thank you for the service that she did for our country 75 years ago. That's lovely. Very nice. Thank mm -hmm. you. Work on the Enigma machine wasn't declassified until the 1970s. And then after that, it wasn't very widely shared. So some, even people like Julia Parsons, who were working on the decoding directly, weren't aware of it until even into the 90s, early 2000s. That was uh, quite a shock to me because I could have talked about it a lot sooner. Well, if we had failed to decipher Enigma, I don't think there's any doubt among experts that the war would have been protracted considerably because the strategic advantage that we gained by being able to read Nazi communications really helped us. <laughs> It was a great time to be alive and living in Washington, D.C. I loved it. And I met my husband there at a, a party and we were married for 62 years and he died about 15 years ago. I was married in 1944 and I got pregnant in the spring of 45, but I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want to leave the service. By then the war in Europe was over and they were trying to find a place for me to replace the job because obviously I wasn't needed. Nobody was needed in that section anymore. And I would love to have stayed in. I went back to Carnegie Mellon when my youngest daughter was in fourth grade and got my teaching certification in high school English. So then I taught at North Allegheny for five years. I had three children, eight grandchildren and 11 great grandchildren and more to come just started talking to vets about their service and they would tell me these wonderful stories that were better than anything I had to say when I was giving a lecture and not only that but they wanted to share their stories. We've just had a wonderful parade and more people than we ever imagined are here. It's really a wonderful celebration. And the Veterans Breakfast Club has just been fabulous for her. She was going into schools, especially with young schoolgirls. She loved that because she really inspired them as to what women could do. My husband said one time, he said, unfortunately for you, you were born a woman. And I said, yes, but I can do things. I don't want to just scrub floors. And I said, I have nothing against housekeeping and being a mother and all that. I said, I, I want to really do something in this world now that I know I can. I didn't really join just to serve the country. I wanted to end the war. This was part of my goal and uh, I helped. 